The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to the Curiox Biosystems webinar. We thank you for attending today. We have two speakers. Next slide. Dr. Arnaud Calantonio, who is the Associate Director of Analytical Development at Adiset Bio, and Dr. Charles Martin, who is the Director of Marketing for Curiox Biosystems. The presentation will take approximately 25 minutes. We will be taking questions at the end. Please type your questions in the chat box and we will address them. Thank you. Now may I introduce Dr. Charles Martin. Okay, thanks Sheila. Uh, let me just switch over to my slides. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay, all right, so thank you. Welcome to our, our webinar. We're excited to share some customer results with you. Arnaud, who will follow me, will present data from Adiset, a cell therapy company. Many in the cell therapy area will immediately see the value of process improvement, better quantitation, and reproducibility that drop array can deliver. So much has been done to standardize and improve flow cytometry data through instrument improvements and software automation for analysis. The area that has received the least attention for standardization is sample preparation. Drop array can enable standardization to sample preparation by eliminating much of the human variability in aspiration and flicking and other aspects of, of washing. As it has been pointed out over the past few years by many prominent scientists, reproducibility can be an issue in science and washing of cells by automation is key to generating reproducible data, especially in cell therapy and flow cytometry. So we've introduced the DA cell washer, DA for drop array, on the left to wash cells in a 96 well format and remove user variation that occurs during centrifugation and aspiration or flicking. We are working on the next generation, which will be a fully automated workstation, including addition of reagents to cells, incubation, et cetera, essentially surface staining and or intracellular, intracellular staining protocols from start to finish. Uh, so the drop array, the DA cell, is a position to minimize all of these challenges listed from the centrifugation of cells. In a conventional wash process, scientists typically use a centrifuge and a multi-channel pipette. A wash of two centrifugations takes a total of 15 to 20 minutes, depending on what your particular protocol is. And in contrast, DA cell takes care of the entire wash process automatically in two minutes without centrifuging the cells. And without centrifugation, cells do not experience any external forces or stress. So in this slide, I'm going to show a short movie clip of how the DA cell washer runs. And in the movie, there's two wells in the plate that have droplets of green fluorescent polystyrene beads and two droplets of food coloring solution. And after 20 minutes of rest, beads settle on the plate, just like cells would. Then a user places the plate in the washer and hits the start button. The plate goes in and the fluidics head comes down to the plate. In this run, we've lifted the cover of the washer to show the movement of the head and the plate inside. Now the head has 192 nozzles total. So two nozzles per well, one for dispensing in each well and one for aspiration in each well. And during the two minute operation, it performs seven cycles each of dispensing and aspiration. So when the wash is complete, the plate comes out and in the pictures, you can see that the food coloring solution is completely gone. And so the food coloring represents tagged antibodies, while the green fluorescent beads, which would in this case take the place of cells, are retained on the plate. Now you may wonder how come the ink was washed away while the beads were retained, but just to clarify, the beads are not attached to the plate by any interactions, just as cells aren't. They're simply sitting on the plate, held there by gravity, without any adhesion. And so I'll show you a, a little bit later how this works. And so actually right now, so the retention of beads and cells on the plate is based on well-characterized science. We use gravity and laminar flow, uh, which are very well known forces in nature. The secret is that the use of these two forces on an almost flat, wallless plate. So we control the forces. At the bottom of the slide, you can see the working mechanism of cell washing by DA cell. So the cells are mixed and settled on a plate by gravity. The settling takes 20 minutes or so usually during standard incubation periods during a staining protocol. Um, so once the cells are settled, the action of dispensing and aspiration above the cells doesn't disturb them. So 
The wash solution forms a laminar flow during dispensing and aspiration and minimizes turbulence of the liquid flowing over the settled cells. By laminar flow, the velocity of the fluid becomes zero at the surface of the plate. And at the very bottom of the plate, where cells are located, cells are not subjected to the fast flow rate of the wash buffer. And over this thin fluidic layer, washing happens by diffusion rather than turbulence of the fluid. This is how we can wash the cells without losing them. And so interestingly, when we perform identical dispensing and aspiration in a conventional walled plate, the action of dispensing and aspiration causes turbulence, which will lift the cells from the bottom of the plate, leading to cell loss. And later I'll show an example clearly demonstrating that this type of washing is just as efficient as centrifugation-based washing. So now, in the next few slides, I just have a few more. I just want to quickly highlight some data we've run with collaborators and customers, and it will complement the data that Arnaud will shortly present. So the first example is a rapid and complete washing of a stimulant to study the activation of cells more accurately without artifacts coming from the remaining residual stimulant. So in this case, IL-7 was added to T cells and activation was monitored by PSTAT-5 staining. As you can see, the DA cell washed cells on the top return nearly to a non-stimulated state more quickly than the centrifuge based washing of cells, indicating that the IL-7 was washed away more completely. Now these next couple of examples show optimized DA cell methods. So every time we work with a customer, we, we optimize for their particular protocols. And so in this case, the two cases, I'm gonna show how the method can retain more cells, uh, particularly cells from tissue samples. So the flow rate of dispensing and aspiration can be adjusted to optimize as we've done here. And here we show enhanced cell retention during Fox P3, Fox P3 staining of splenocytes. And this chart is a relative comparison to the two method of washing. So two methods at one or at the, the, the bars, and then the chart is relative to that. So you can see from the, the DA cell colored bars, the maroon color, that the DA cell has better retention at both the flow rates. And again, this is optimized. And then this slide uh, also shows enhanced retention, in this case, better retention of TILs or tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. And again, this is a relative expression compared to the tube method. And then finally, I just wanted to talk quickly about running the plates on flow cytometers. So a drop array plate can hold up to 70 microliters, and, and that's great for washing in the assays, but it may be too small to read the plate directly on a flow cytometer. Depends on the flow cytometer. And often this flow, flow cytometers may require 100 to 150 microliters. And we do have an accessory to, to increase the volume of the plate when it's time to read. Uh, and for example, in this case, this is on an HTS plate reader by a, on a BD flow cytometer. So the graph on the left shows the comparison between a conventional U-bottom plate and then a drop array plate where the gray bars are U-bottom and the maroon bars are the drop array plate. And as the graph shows, the reading from a drop array plate is as good as reading from a, U, a standard U-bottom plate. And even when cell numbers are as low as 10,000, the recovery of cells by direct reading are comparable between the U-bottom plate and a drop array plate. And so this concludes my introduction of the DA cell and a few highlights of customer data. And I'm going to turn my presentation over to Arnaud and let him take it. So we've got a, just a short transition here. And Arn, let's see here. Arnaud, do you have control? Uh, looks, looks like, like I do. All right, yep. excellent. So please proceed. Uh, thank you, Charles. And I'd like to thank everyone who's attended the webinar. Um, I chose this particular title to emphasize the the simplicity of the 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 DA cell, and hopefully through the the, the slides you'll see, you'll be convinced that this technology can be applied both in analytical development and hopefully eventually in QC as well uh, to ease the process of technology transfer from one department to the next and also to simplify flow cytometry workflows in general. Slides not advancing. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Sorry, we've got a slight delay on the feed here. So the overall goals for here for the webinar is to, to give you a sense of the overall time savings that we've seen by implementing the DA cell. To show you that the data quality that we've compiled internally is at least comparable to the manual centrifugation method. To highlight the fact that the technology makes it very easy to transfer an assay from one group to the next or to train new operators. 
I'll show you that the data we've compiled so far has stayed relatively consistent over time. And we've maintained the ability to, to detect rare populations, which is important for us as we develop the next round of cell therapy products. So I'll start by giving you a little bit of background about who Adeset is. So we are developing an off-the-shelf Gamma Delta T cell product, uh, which uh, are, is composed of engineered Gamma Delta T cells with CARs, TCRLs, or TCRs. We are developing a pipeline of products that range from liquid and solid tumors. We've currently developed a robust large-scale manufacturing platform. Key here is that we have a strategic collaboration with Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, which includes an annual research funding collaboration between the two groups. And of course, most importantly, we have solid financial positions with a Series A of about 51 million. And we did also receive 21 million up front from Regeneron, which is allowing us to develop this next phase of, of cell therapy products very efficiently. So just to frame this a little bit in terms of where we are in the cell therapy world, um, this, which was highlighted in Charles' presentation as well, but this is a conventional autologous cell therapy method where it's patient-derived leukophoresis materials that gets genetically modified, expanded, and then reinfused back into the patient. This is logistically challenging, and you're dealing with um, donor material that has gone through several rounds of chemo and may not be optimal for the manufacturing process. Where Adeset comes in is we actually have a process that starts with a normal healthy donor. And from this normal healthy donor, we can activate specific subsets of gamma delta T cells, engineer them to express CARs or TCRs, expand them uh, to the point where we can actually create multiple doses from one incoming leukophoresis. This product is then cryopreserved, banked, and then can be used to treat several patients. So we're, the distinguishing feature here is we're not dealing with patient-derived material, but healthy donor-derived material to start with. Now, of course, as this is a cell therapy product, flow cytometry plays a role in a lot of different aspects of the, the manufacturing process. Um, in this slide, I highlight three points where flow cytometry is required to understand what we're manufacturing. So at the beginning, we use flow to identify the subsets of gamma delta cells that will be expanding. Post-expansion, we want to make sure that our cells have been properly engineered and that the purity of the material has reached the desired level. And then after cryopreservation, the material is thawed, and again, the same analysis is done to verify the batches for release for actual treatment of patients. So at least the, the goals in my particular group at Adesat are to create re reproducible assays that will guide process development and eventually the manufacturing process as well. Now the key here is that we need to turn the art that is flow cytometry into something that's reliable and reproducible. So we quickly decided on several different aspects of trying to lock down uh, the flow cytometry assays that we were creating. So optimize the panel design, titrate antibody concentration, lock the cytometer settings to minimize missing drift, create and use uh, cell product reference material, and I'll show you some of that later on. Of course, develop SOPs for staining to minimize operator variability and use analysis templates or automate the analysis completely. So the one outstanding point here that was lacking was the fact that we were still doing manual centrifugation. So these are the first steps that we knew of until we realized that the, the DA cell existed. So to give you a sense of the complexity of the flux cytometry panel that we're currently using, we use an eight color panel run on a Canto 2. We're actually using 10 different antibodies in the panel to be able to identify different aspects of the material. Uh, with particular focus on the gamma delta T cells, uh, which we can identify by a TCR gamma delta antibody, also through, through CD3. And then we have two gamma delta subsets that we're interested in, V delta 1 and V delta 2. And then we can look at impurities in the material, including B cells through CD19, monocytes through CD14, alpha beta T cells through TCR alpha beta staining, and NK cells with CD56. And all these populations will come up in later slides. So this is an, uh, a sample gating strategy that we have. So we gate on singlet cells that are live by zombie aqua negativity. We can identify monocytes um, through CD14 and high side scatter. From the monocyte negative fraction, we identify lymphocytes through forward scatter and side scatter, which you can see in the top right. Then we gate on CD3 positive and CD3 negative events. Now the CD3 negative is shown in red, 
we can identify NK cells by CD56 positivity, B cells through CD19 positivity, and then in the CD3 positive compartment in blue, we can identify alpha beta T cells through TCR alpha beta, gamma delta through total gamma delta expression, and then we can subset the gamma deltas into, into three populations, V delta one single positive, V delta two single positive, and the V delta one negative, V delta two double negative population of gamma deltas. Now the thing you'll notice here is that the gamma delta frequency in starting material, which is what's shown here, is pretty low, where we're talking about one between less than 2% of starting total T cell fraction. So we need to be able to have high resolution on this particular population. So prior to implementation of the DA cell, we did take a look at the donor variability of the material, and you can see that three different donors, there's high variability in um, a lot of the starting populations. Most of the starting material is high in monocytes and TCR alpha betas. You can see here that the gamma delta population within all live cells is relatively small. Okay, we're somewhere in the order of, again, less than 2% of all incoming material, and we need to have a clean resolution on this particular population in order to make sure that we're manufacturing the right cells for treatment of patients. So this was the crux of the, the rest of the presentation, is how do we compare a manual centrifugation method to this new DA cell? So manual centrifuge procedures are still kind of the standard spin and flick. So add buffer, spin it down, flick off the buffer, resuspend the pellet with addition of buffer, and go through at least two rounds or so of the, the wash procedure. The DA cell by comparison is load the plate, push a button, walk away, come back when it's done. Not that you have that much time because it's only about two minutes per wash cycle um, in terms of a comparability for the manual centrifugation method. So the first thing we decided to do with, with Curax's help is to map out our workflow and see what our time savings would be if we implemented the device. So the, the next couple slides will be kind of our product evaluation phase. So you can see uh, uh, our staining procedure in the middle with emphasis particularly on the wash steps in the gray. And then on the left side is the timing for the manual centrifugation method. And you can see per wash cycle, it's roughly about 10 minutes and we do two washes between each of the staining steps, which means our total stain time is, a uh, wash time is about 60 minutes. Whereas on the DA cell, every single cycle is for washing is fixed at two minutes, which means we only spend about six minutes of time per entire flow cytometry workflow waiting for the washing procedure. So that's already a pretty significant time uh, savings. Now in terms of the data quality that we we received. So this is representative data on the left-hand side. You can see manual centrifugation where we're comparing this V delta one versus V delta two subset. And on the right side, you can see the DA cell. And there's already some striking visual differences between the two. So if you look at the V delta one single positive population in the upper left, uh, the DA cell material consistently comes with less spread and less fanning of that, that single positive population. So we get a cleaner type population. And the V delta two single positive in the lower right tends to be tighter. Now the added benefit here is it makes the gating strategy a lot easier for operators because the, the separation between the negative population and the positive population is that much cleaner. We did a head to head comparison between the two methods with two different donors and here I'm highlighting four different populations of cells. And yes, there is a little bit of, of variability in the frequencies, but it's nothing that we would consider outside the normal noise level. So the, the reported frequencies that we had, at least for the four populations that are, I'm depicting here, are within the noise that we would expect for normal variability in closed staining. We decided to dive a little bit deeper. So what we did here is we gated individual populations of cells. And because the panel uniquely identifies the populations through one marker, we looked at the mean fluorescence intensity of each of the individual markers in that population, and then we plotted the MFI between the manual centrifugation on the left and the DA cell on the right. And what's striking here is that the DA cell and the manual centrifugation method gives us roughly equivalent MFIs with a slight advantage to the DA cell. And we're borderlining, uh, we're right at the border of statistical significance here. My assumption would be that if we ran this type of analysis on more samples, we would probably hit statistical significance. The key for me here is that there was no deterioration in the signal 
um, with implementation of the DA cell. So uh, that data set was enough to convince us to bring the DA cell in and to use it in our workflows. So the next couple of slides, I will uh, show you the, per the performance of the, the machine across um, several runs using an internal reference control that we've developed in-house. In so again, the operation is an entire push, entirely push button. The plate's loaded, you push the button, you wait, the plate's ejected, you're ready to go through to the next round of staining. So we quickly decided to do kind of a mock validation run. So uh, what I'm showing you here are two independent operators doing two independent stainings with replicates for each operator. And you can see that the DA cell allowed us to get very tight uh, control over the, the populations that are reported. You can see that we have very tight CVs, again, largely in part to the fact that there's clear separation between the populations. And with centralized analysis, you can see that we can get the CVs down to 10 to 11%. And that 10 to 11% CV range is on populations that are less than 1% of the total live cells in uh, the starting material. So what I'm showing here is kind of the reproducibility of this refer reference material over time. So again, we, we use a, a frozen bank of cells that we can thaw for every single run. And you can see over 12 runs that now span almost four months of operation, the, the relative frequencies of each one of these subsets, while there's some fluctuation, overall the trends are fairly consistent across the board. I will highlight here that this is completely independent runs with completely independent uh, users running the analysis. And still we maintain a, a, a certain level of, of percentages of each of these populations that's relatively consistent over time. And then we, we compile this data uh, in terms of a boxed whisker plot. You can see for the populations that are listed, again, we have very tight specs. Um, we can develop an internal C of A for our reference material so that we know exactly how well our flow cytometry panel is performing. And this is highlighted again, the, the, the optimization that we got with, with implementation of the DA cell. So where are we now? So implementation of the DA cell currently saves us about 50 minutes per assay run. So even over the course of one week where we're running, you know, maybe 10 assays uh, between all the individual users, we're talking about almost eight to 10 hours of FTE time that's saved just in terms of optimizing the wash step. So the data generated from the DA cell is at least equal to the data generated from the manual centrifugation method. Um, there's no real, there's a slight advantage to the DA cell in terms of the MFI. The frequencies are roughly equivalent. Um, key here is that implementation of the DA cell did not require major, major changes to our existing procedures. It was very plug and play. We could swap out the centrifuge, bring in the DA cell, and we did not have to modify our, our uh, staining workflow um, in any significant way. And I think I've highlighted the fact that the use of the DA cell does minimize operator variability. So currently the DA cell is, is part of our workflow. It's being operated in analytical development and all of our subsequent flow cytometry based assays will be developed using the DA cell as the wash method. Uh, we are currently in the process of tech transferring this particular workflow into QC. And we think by having the DA cell in place that will simplify the process because we're transferring a workflow from a device to a device rather than from an operator to an operator. And Charles highlighted this, but I think the DA cell is a prime device for creating a, an automated flow cytometry station where you can easily have, for example, six deck positions, one with an antibody source plate, one with your cell source plate, and a robotic arm in the 96 wheel head. You could do all of your sample prep and all of your washing and potentially even your acquisition all in one automated platform. And with that, I'd like to thank uh, the people at Dataset that actually did the work, so Praveen and Judith, and Kiriox for their support as we transition from our, our manual process into the automated process, um, highlighting uh, Rachel's help in this and Charles and Nam, Nam Young's conversations uh, and implementation of the device. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Arno. That was a very interesting and informative presentation. Thank you. If you have questions, please type them into the chat box and I will ask them for you. But we do have a question that's come in. 
So for adapting to an eight panel assay, adapting an eight panel assay to the DA cell system, how long did it take you? Um, so the full implementation, you know, after our, our tech evaluation took less than a day. So once we received, we ordered and received the device, it was as easy as just starting to run the flow with the optimization that we had already done with Karyox. Um, the only thing we had to tweak slightly was the volumes that we were using for staining, but that was a very minor change. Okay, great. Um, another question. So when you gave your presentation and I see the system, it looks like there are a lot of nozzles. Do you have any, or did you have any issue with clogging? Um, so routinely, no. Um, so over four months, we've had one minor clogging issue that was easily resolved with the help of Karyox. Going forward, that issue is not gonna be a problem. We know how to deal with it. So we have had no substantial problems with clogging with that, that many nozzles in the device. Great. Okay, let's look at some questions here. Uh, so using centrifuge, centrifugeless washing, you get better resolution. Do you also get a higher staining index? Uh, in general, yeah, we do. Um, we do see a slightly higher MFI between the two. Again, highlighting the separation between the negative population and the positive population. Um, we didn't do a formal calculation of the stain index, but we do see at least about a thousand um, arbitrary units increase in the, the MFI for, for all the markers that we're actually interested in. Great. And uh, during your presentation, you said you there were multiple users. Was it difficult to train multiple users on the system or was it pretty seamless? Well, with a big red button, um, no, it's very seamless. Uh, you know, it was a matter of showing a person how to put the plate in and push the button, making sure that the, the settings were set correctly and that, that was it. So there, there's no variability in you know, one operator being too harsh on resuspension of the cells or you know, not adding enough buffer or not spinning long enough. You know, in this case, all those those operations are fully locked by the device, and it's just push push the button once the plate's loaded and wait for it to be ejected. Great. Are there any additional questions from anyone on the panel? Okay. Wonderful. If you have further questions, please feel free to uh, to uh, send an email to sales at curiox.com and I'll make sure they get answered. Actually, we have quite a few other questions if you check oh. the question box in your control panel. Oh, I'm checking chat. Oh, thank you. Do you use pre-mixed or pre-made antibody cocktails or manually prepare the cocktail? So we are, you know, that's, that's one consideration we've talked about in terms of pre-mixed or lyophilized antibody mixtures. Um, we are currently creating manual master mixes, um, usually a couple hours prior to the, the staining that we're doing. Um, so that aspect of the process hasn't been optimized either. But, you know, the, the manually created master mixes works well for, for this particular application. Another question, do you have an application note for intracellular staining, in particular for PhosphoFlow? Uh, so we, we do have, we've run a number of protocols with different customers and an intracellular protocol is one that we commonly do. We don't have an application note, but we could easily take a look at your protocol and tell you how it would be adapted. Great, thank you. Have you ever tried to perform an assay in DA cell plates rather than transferring them from an assay plate to the DA cell plate? Are there plans for future plates that assays can be performed in? So, uh, I mean, in our experience, the entire assay is performed on the DA cell plate. So all of the antibody incubations are done in plate, and then the plate is washed between each individual step. So the only 
kind of loading that needs to be done is the cells being put on the plate at the beginning and then everything else stays on the DA cell. Um, we are currently evaluating kind of acquisition directly um, off the plate. Uh, we haven't fully implemented that portion, um, but everything is done completely contained on the, the wallless plate. Thank you. What are the minimum and maximum cells per well with the DA cell? So I can answer that. So we have a user that goes down to 50 to 100 cells on the minimum side, and we've tested up to 10 million. How do you deal with the lower stain volumes in DA cell? Um, so the, the staining volumes that we've been using are, are roughly comparable to what we would do with a conventional 96 well plate. Uh, so our master mix buffer or our master mix volume is still somewhere around 25 microliters. Um, so we haven't really had to adjust anything considerably lower. Um, the starting cell density in order to get the cells plated is lower than we would normally do. Um, so they're at a higher density. Um, but we haven't had any issues with, with you know, dropping the amount of volume that's there. So the cells are staying in roughly about 50 microliters total volume. Do you use full 96 wells when you wash cells? I understand you need to wash the whole plate. The whole plate does get washed simultaneously. So each well is washed independently of the rest. But if you have say only 24 samples or 48 samples, you can use, even though the plate is washed, you can use those wells over again that did not have any cells. Uh, and you can store the plate for about three weeks in the at four degrees. Yeah, Thank this you. has definitely been, been our experience. We actually don't use whole plates at a time, but we use the wells that we need uh, for that particular run, and we will reuse the plates until we, we use all 96 positions. Thank you for sharing such interesting data. Did you face any issues in the pipetting of smaller, vo smaller volumes in the DA cell plate? Um, with a 25 microliter volume for the addition of the antibody, no, we haven't had any issues. Um, the plate configuration is pretty standard, so we can add the antibodies with the standard, you know, either uh, eight channel or 12 channel um, multi-channel pipetter, and it's been really consistent. What is the max color you used? Uh, we haven't pushed it past eight colors, but I'm sure Curiox has experience with us. We've done up to 21. Have you performed any DA cell assessments on whole blood samples? Or no, you haven't used any whole blood, have you? No, we've been using cell culture supernatant. Okay. And so whole blood, you know, typically most people use a much larger volume for the for the red cell, red blood cell lysis. So that's a, an application we're working on. How do you change the buffer manually? If so, does that take extra time? There's a prime function on the washer, just like most typical washers. So you have your bottle of, of wash buffer and you just tell the instrument to prime and it takes two minutes or so. Is the platform compatible with fixation buffers? Yes, we've done intracellular staining with perm permeability fixation buffers, and that's not an issue. Next question is, thanks, Arno. Good to hear from you. Dave Q at NIBR. We worry about variability in recovery, specific cell loss, and efficiency of washing. Did you test any other types of cell prep or densities? And did you test efficiency of washing directly? Um, we didn't actually vary this. Our, our, our benchmark was really kind of just swapping out uh, our, our optimized manual method versus our you know, new optimized with DA cell method. Um, we didn't push the limits of the system. We were just making sure that we had uh, you know, comparable results between the two. Now that we have the device in-house and consistently used, we're going to most likely do a, a fair amount of evaluation on 
you know, within the, the context of manufacturing space where we get fewer cells depending on the runs, you know, what can we expect and what are the tolerances for the assay moving forward? Great. I think we may have answered this one. Do you see value in the instrument if you only utilize a few wells per experiment, not a full plate? Yes. Uh, from our experience, absolutely. I mean, just saving on that 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 wash time and and again the the qualitative improvement in the the staining um, definitely makes it worth it. And you know, you can reuse the plate until you you use all 96 positions anyway. So there's there's no loss in in starting with only a couple wells. Are clinical flow cytometry labs using the DA cell? Uh, we do have one clinical lab that's currently using it, and we have a number that are that are looking at it. So yes. Okay, and the final question for a twenty-plus color panel, the lower stain volume could be an issue. Correct. Uh, we work with customers to adjust their protocols if they have a large a large panel of antibodies that they want to look at. So, like I said, we've gone to 21, and we did not have uh, major issues. I know some some antibody suppliers provide their 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 products at certain concentrations, and we have an application team that'll work with you to make the appropriate adjustments. And then we also have uh, an accessory we're working on that we could expand the volume of the well if, if for some reason you can't change the volume. Great, and we had one more just come in. Have you had any issues with cross well contamination as a result of plate manipulation or transfer to cytometer? Uh, no, we haven't witnessed anything. It's been very clean. Uh, there's not really as many aerosols that would be generated from, from what we can tell. Um, and the, you, you saw from the, the cell reference material that the, these are, this is an independent measure every single time. The frequencies come back relatively the same within, you know, what our expected rate tolerance is. Um, and we, we haven't seen that, for example, that reference material show up in other wells. Everything seems pretty independent and self-contained. Great. One more just came in. Uh, when will the accessory be available? Is it the same as for whole blood stain and lysis? Uh, it, it may not be the same accessory. The, the accessory should be available pretty shortly. You know, we're a small company, we move pretty fast. So it's not gonna be months, it might be a month or two. Wonderful. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you Arnaud for such a interesting presentation and I appreciate all of the questions. Thank you so much. We've recorded the webinar and we will be putting it up on our website as well. Thank you, everyone. Ugh. <sighs>